Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ, where we have a passion for God and compassion for all. We have a few announcements to share for this morning. First, we want to say happy birthday to Randy Odell. And then to all of our golfers here, we want to celebrate the fact that Friday is National Golfing Day. So enjoy yourself. We want to give a big thanks for everyone who made our beard campaign such a big success. We were able to raise $11,178 and we are still baby faced and trying to adjust to this new look that we have. We want to lift up that today we have our brunch. Um, our volunteers are working to make a really delicious meal. $5, you can have scrambled eggs or eggs made to order. You can have melon, you can have bacon, you can have sausage and, and biscuits and gravy. So we're certainly looking forward to that. I would also just like to share three more things. One, we did have a wireless mic that we did a test run on. You know, the kind that goes over my ear like we used to. It looked really good, but the sound quality did not translate to our recording. So for the sake of those watching from home, we're going to continue to use this mic. However, we now have a prototype, so we know what kind of mic to get. So hopefully, after Tracy is done having his well-deserved vacationing and journeying around the globe, we'll have a mic that will fit over my ear and we'll go back to how things used to be. Talking about how things used to be, I'm sure you saw that the numbers of COVID have increased for the fifth week in a row. The state of Florida is now at a 6.3% positivity. Highlands County is at a 3.8% rate of positivity. We know anything over 5% is considered dangerous. We also know that there's a lot of people who are taking home COVID tests, who are testing positive, and that's not being reported. I'm sharing this with you because everyone here has continued to be wise and smart. I know most people are vaccinated and boosted, but if you want to wear a mask, please know you are allowed to. There is no judgment. I myself may resume wearing a mask next Sunday, seeing how the numbers are going. More so for your sake than for my sake. But please just continue to be as careful and wise as you can, but continue to live your best life possible. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. The final announcement is you will see in the fellowship hall three of our beautiful homemade prayer shawls. They will be blessed later on today to be sent out to different people throughout the community. If you happen to be present after the fellowship time and you would like to participate in the blessing of the prayer shawl, you're welcome to join us. If not, you can simply walk up to the prayer shawls, say your own little prayer and touch each one of them and know that they will be sent to people. Um, who will greatly appreciate that. With our announcements out of the way, I'd like to now invite you to silence your cell phone if you feel comfortable enough to do so. And all of the stress and all of the worries from the week before, now is the time to let that go. And just as we talked about how the resurrection created community last week, let us all stand as one community as we sing our mission theme song.
Today we celebrate agape, God's motherly love for all of God's children. We celebrate agape, God's fatherly love for all God's children. Today we share our gifts with the Great Shepherd, caring for God's flock. We show our thanks through generosity and giving to others. Today we give testimony that love is as strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. We lean upon our beloved, thankful for all that God has done.
and knowing that we have people from around the world who are worshiping with us, let us turn to the camera in the back and also extend to them a sign of grace and peace and welcome. You may please face forward. Christ is our advocate, leading us to the light of righteousness. No matter what tragic mistakes we have made, we could take them before Jesus and lay them at his feet. Let us now enter into a time of our own silent confession. And knowing that the God who resurrects is also the God who forgives, let us join together by saying, The Lord listens to our hearts, forgives our sins, and shines upon us. We are surrounded by grace and not forgotten. Amen. You may be seated.
Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, If you believe because you have seen me, blessed are those that have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, and all were written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and to believe you, you may have life in his name. Please join with me in a moment of centering prayer. Gracious and Holy One, thank you. Thank you for another week, and thank you for the resurrection, and thank you for your abiding love and your promise that anyone who comes to you will not be thrown away. May your Holy Spirit fill this place, warming our hearts and touching our minds. It is in your Son's name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. So before we even get into the message today, there's just a few things I'd like to say. First of all, Jim and Marge, Welcome back. We haven't seen you for a while. We're so glad, Marge, that you are feeling better and you are able to join us. We have missed you. We certainly want to surround Hardrick and Roxy with our prayers, knowing that his beloved sister Joyce died just a few days ago. We also want to lift up that our beloved sister Gloria Lockwood, who was our organist for a long, long time, we just found out that she had actually passed in February. And anyone who knows Gloria knows that she blessed us with her music and she had such a beautiful home around Lake Bird. But we also want to give thanks for Bay and Carol, who are dear, dear friends, basically family to Ari, who decided to join us today. Thank you for joining us. It is an honor that you're here. And it is so good to see everyone else. And for Faye and Evan, who will be flying home this week, we miss you. And for Michael Griffith, who has not been here and will not be here for about another two more weeks, we are expecting you to come back clean shaven. We did raise our 10,000, so we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting to see Michael without a beard. And you know, I'm glad that we can laugh because truthfully, Today's actually a very bittersweet day. For 19 weeks, we have been swimming through the waters and bathing in the light of the Gospel of John. And today we come to the end of our journey in this amazing book. After today, there is no more woman at the well. After today, there is no more being told to pick up your mat and walk. And after today, we get to set sail into the adventurous book of Acts. And then we'll get to read the Paul's letter to the Philippian church. And during the summertime, we're going to explore one of the apocryphal books called Tobit, which is so magical and full of whimsy. But for today, we have one glistening jewel from the Gospel of John to observe. And what a jewel today's reading is. Today's reading, in my opinion, is probably one of the most misunderstood and most unfairly aligned scriptures and characters that we encounter in the scripture. Because I don't know about you, but I have grown to the point that I really like Thomas, and I really think Thomas is a hero and someone to be emulated. It has been about 10 days since Thomas and the disciples have shared their final meal with Jesus. It has been 10 days since Thomas has watched his teacher being betrayed and arrested. It's been about a week since Mary Magdalene came back from the tomb claiming that the stone was rolled away and the body of Jesus was missing. And it's been a week since everyone except Thomas was there to experience the resurrected Christ entering into the room and breathing words of peace upon them. 
Try to imagine, if you can, what you think the past 10 days have been like for Thomas. How hard they may have been for Thomas to process. I mean, think about it. One moment you are there watching Jesus enter into town victoriously while people are singing and shouting Hosanna. And then the next moment you're watching as police officers and soldiers are coming to arrest him. One day you're there while Jesus is turning water into wine. And then the other day your leader is hanging from a cross saying, I thirst. If we place ourselves into that historic moment, and if we imagined ourselves being one of the 12 disciples, one of the questions is how would we process that? How does someone like Thomas make sense that someone who had the ability to heal others could so easily and recklessly be killed? Is Thomas supposed to believe Mary Magdalene when she comes back claiming that the stone has been rolled away? Is Thomas supposed to believe a group of guys that they were locked up in a room somewhere and Jesus was able to reappear three days later walking through a door and breathing peace be with you onto the people? Thomas does not believe them. And rightfully so. Ask yourself this question. Would you believe them? Imagine if you were one of the disciples and you were there at that moment and remove 2,000 years of the Gospels. Remove all the letters, of the, the letters from Paul because they did not exist. Remove centuries upon centuries of Christian pastors preaching about the Easter experience, would you have believed the people's testimonies? You see, Thomas is a person, and Thomas is just like us, and he's trying to process the events of a most traumatic kind. And the way that Thomas decides to process things is through his intellect, through reason and order and structure. Thomas is choosing to seek quantified truth, and it doesn't mean that his faith is any less. Now, Thomas's story is so rich because it tells us a lot, but the story of Thomas also leaves so much room for our imagination. Now, people will ask the question, well, why wasn't Thomas with the disciples when the resurrected Christ first appeared? And the answer is we don't know. But after what we've been through for the past two years, we can make some really good guesses. Again, put yourself in the shoes of Thomas. He has just experienced a community-wide traumatic event. And if there's one thing we've all learned from living through COVID together, is that everyone experiences and lives through trauma in a completely different way. Isn't it safe to say that there are some people who live through COVID by being in complete denial and going on with their life as if there was nothing to worry about at all? And then isn't it fair to say we know people who went the completely opposite direction, who became scared of everyone and everything, who sequestered themselves away, and they are still in a cocoon, and they'll probably never be ready to come out again. And then many of us who are here today, probably somewhere in between, that we've been cautious and hesitant, but we've also taken our chances and we've used livable, seeable experience to decide how are we going to live during this pandemic. You know, perhaps Thomas is the kind of person who deals with trauma and loss by being alone. Everyone grieves completely differently. There are those who need to be with family and friends and going out to the movies. And there are those who say, just leave me alone. And they curl up on the couch with their blanket for a few days or as long as it takes. 
Maybe Thomas didn't feel safe. Maybe he didn't want to be around the disciples just in case the soldiers and police officers were coming to arrest them next. You know, some people grieve best in groups. Some people grieve best when you leave them alone. So whatever the reason is, it is Thomas's choice. And we are not to judge him for the choice that he made. And then we have today's reading. The gang is together and they tell Thomas, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas says, unless, unless I see, unless I touch, I will not believe. And you know what? Good for Thomas. Good for Thomas that he wants tangible assurance and he wants proof. Good for Thomas that he has the sense that God gave a goose not to immediately go along with a mob mentality of what they think was taking place. You see, Thomas is not about to believe something so inconceivable, so ridiculous, so wonderful without seeing it for himself. This is not a lack of faith. This is the faith of an individual who lives by discernment. This is the faith of someone who likes to process things. This is the faith of someone who likes to act from their head and not a highly emotional heart. And I'm going to pause for a moment because thank God we have counsel because they think a lot from their head because if it was just me, we would be diving off cliff after cliff after cliff. <laughs> so thank God we have people who like the process. When you think about it, Thomas is like the woman at the well. He needs some assurance. Who am I speaking to? And what kind of water is it that you want from me before I go get water for you? Thomas is kind of like Mary and Martha. You know how they had no problem going directly to Jesus and expressing how they felt? Thomas simply just wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the resurrected Christ before he believes. <clears throat> when you think about it, some people will find God in a sunset. But then there are people who find God in learning how a sunset works. Thomas is the latter. And it doesn't mean that his faith is any greater or any less than that of Peter's. Thomas says, unless if I can see and touch, I will not believe. <coughs> and here's the really cool thing. A week later, Jesus appeared. A week later, Jesus appears and he says, Thomas, Someone say amen. Amen. <laughs> I was just telling someone the other day that my biggest fear as a preacher is coughing. So you are watching me right now work through my biggest fear. And if you can just do what they do in the Pentecostal church, just keep me in your prayers and we will get through this. And if I continue to cough, then we will say, God will give you the rest of the message and the world is okay. Amen. Can we get an amen? amen? Amen. Thank you for the throat lozenger. Let's see how this goes now. So Thomas says, unless if I can see and touch, I will not believe. And the cool thing is, Jesus appears and he says, Thomas, put your finger here. See reach out and feel. Jesus had no problem doing what Thomas needed in order for Thomas to believe. And just as Jesus was able to empower one man to see and one man to walk, 
Jesus manifests to Thomas in a way that offers him the ability to believe. <clears throat> How awesome is it that we have a Savior who knows who we are? How awesome that we have a Savior who knows what we need? How awesome it is that we have a Savior who's willing to appear to us in a way that we can believe. You know, for me, it can be the sea. For you, it could be the garden. For another person, it could be a miraculous healing. For Thomas, it was the concrete and tangible that empowered him to believe and his faith to be secure. And it's important for us to hear what happens next. Thomas says what he requires, Jesus provides, and then Thomas makes a proclamation. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Now it's important to realize that these are not just empty words. This is actually one of the most powerful testimonies in the entire Bible. These are the words of someone who gets to experience the resurrection in a way that makes sense to them. And nowhere does it say that Thomas actually touched. Nowhere does it say that he got to put his fingers on the body of the Christ. We are not told that he reached out to feel. But what we know is that the resurrected Christ gives Thomas what he requires and Thomas responds with one of the most unique testimonies. He says, my Lord and my God. This is the only place in the entire collection of New Testament and in the four gospels in which someone calls Jesus God. This is the first and only place in which someone refers to Jesus as my Lord and my God. And these words are said by Thomas, the one who was originally absent, the one who needed to process the whole thing. He becomes the first person to refer to Christ as Lord and God. You know, there are those who believe because they did not see, and then there are those who testify based solely on what they feel. But God bless those who think, and God bless those who process with their mind. Thank God for those who experience the Lord through their logic. Everyone is unique. Everyone gets to experience God in their own way. And because since everyone is unique, the resurrected Christ appears to all of us in unique ways. And since we are made to be in community, and since we are made to live and strive together, we benefit when there are so many different kinds of people who have so many different ways of processing and thinking and believing to come together and work together and to do mission and to do ministry. We benefit from so many different points of view for our ability to proclaim, to share, and to show the world that Christ is not dead, but that the resurrected Christ is here, now, and forever. So as we bid goodbye to the Gospel of John, may we not bid farewell to all of that we have learned and all that we have encountered. For the Jesus who offers you the chance to be made well is the same Christ who will gladly make himself known. Are you ready to see? Are you ready to touch? Are you ready to know? And are you ready to believe? And for that, let us say, Amen. Amen. Let us now enter into our own time of personal reflection. Gracious and Holy One, we give thanks that you are with us through every step of the way. 
We give thanks that you are with us the times when we feel well and our words are strong. And you are even with us when we have a tickle in our throats and a friend has to give us a cough drop. We ask you, Holy One, to be with us right now as we continue to move through this pandemic. Continue to be with our state as we deal with the controversies around the redistricting, redistricting Disney, HB 1557. We ask that you be with our country as we navigate the process of what is it like to welcome refugees. And we ask that you be with your world right now for the places in which people are suffering and they are scared and they are so unsure. We ask Holy One that you surround Randy and his mother during this time, that you be with Nathan and his mother, for Chris Davies and his aunts, for Hardrick as he mourns the death of his sister. Continue to strengthen Ken Koss, and we give thanks for Gloria Lockwood. And Holy One, we also give thanks for the ways in which your spirit makes itself known, for the joys that we have experienced as council, at the food pantry, at our garden of hope. We ask for a safe return for Faye and for Evan, that you surround Michael and Diane with traveling mercies, and we give thanks for the brunch that we are about to share. It is in your son's name we pray and we say, On him was laid 
and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of
and our community garden. And I see we have some people here in church already that are growing, and we're going through our soft open with that to try to understand how it all works before we do it open up as a community. And I ask that if you are interested in doing any gardening, we have four gardens over here that you are welcome to come and help us understand and do gardens how we can present this and move this and grow this into our community as another way to be able to bring food into our community. So while Shepherd's Pantry is our premier, and it's Shepherd's Pantry that we see so much joy in, and it's Shepherd's Pantry that really, really, really brings us together uh, when we do fellowship and do the work that we do before, and we hand out food, and we actually really have close contact with those in need. It's the thing that brings us to joy, but it's not the only joy that we have. We have all of this ministry that helps the community, that helps each one of us, that helps each one of us to fellowship together and walk the walk of doing justice and loving kindness. So we'll take two offerings today. Our first offering will be for um, our church, and our second operating, uh, uh, offering will be for our, our shepherds ministries, all the things that we do for our community and our church.
kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. today. Reminder that we have a brunch immediately after worship in the fellowship hall. We'll be doing the blessing of three prayer shawls. There is no Bible study on Tuesday. I'm actually going to be in Fort Pierce all next week working from the coast by the ocean. Woe is me. But you can contact me. You can call me. You can email me. I'm still working. I'm just going to happen to be by Mama Ocean the whole time. <laughs> and we did have an air conditioner chat scheduled for today, but we were not able to, um, well, Diane's not here. <laughs> and then we looked at May, and there's other people who aren't there. So we probably won't have our next AC chat until June. But know that that doesn't mean that you cannot come up to council or me or any of our leaders between now and then if you have any concerns or questions. The final thing I just wanted to share is pastors are human beings as well. And it may surprise you to learn that a lot of pastors have those anxiety dreams that all of us have had when we were in school. We had those anxiety dreams of, oh my God, we're late to worship or Oh my God, we can't find our robe or our stole. You just witnessed me work through my greatest fear. And here's the beautiful thing. I'm still here. Amen. And the world still continues to turn and life goes on. Thank you for supporting me during my most feared moment of all time. And just being the loving congregation you are. And it's also a reminder 
I think sometimes as Christians, we feel like we're supposed to be perfect. What I'm learning more and more is that the resurrected Christ expects us just to be us. Amen. And let the resurrected Christ be the one who is perfect, who can bring healing and wellness Amen. to us. With that being said, I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the benediction. And Ari, because you have special guests and family in our congregation, can you please do the benediction for us? And I'd like to ask as Ari does the benediction, if you could all extend your hands. Auf Wiedersehen and different ways. Uh, God bless us. Be upon this church, uh, everyone that prays you in this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing, Grace the Lord. He's the only, holy and just. Let's all sing. Grace the Lord. Thank you.